I am Mr. Teru. Okay, we're going to break down the polar coordinate system. Uh, help you with this first video, explain or understand, you know, what the polar system is, how it works, how it's related to the uh, rectangular coordinate system. We're going to do a, a little bit of a conversion to help you learn this uh, concept. Then we're going to have another video of just simply doing conversion from polar to coordinate. That's the next video linked above me. And then we're going to also do conversions for equations uh, between rectangular and polar coordinate systems. But for right now, if you've never heard or understood uh, the word polar coordinate, let's just get that basic understanding down. So we have this rectangular coordinate of negative 3, 4. And over here, we have in yellow an xy axis. And I've also got a lot of circles and a lot of lines that you might recognize if you've been studying the unit circle lately. That'll come into play, but for right now, we're just going to graph negative 3, 4. Now, this is a rectangular coordinate. So back from the origin, we're going to go back three spaces because it's negative and up four. Okay, so that point right there is our coordinate of negative three, four. Now let's talk about the polar system. Well, when you write a polar coordinate, it's not x comma y, it's r theta. And, at least for the way I like to describe graphing polar coordinates, I like to say that the radius is the last thing you should do, and the first thing is move theta. Like, Almost think of graphing polar coordinates as if uh, you have like a little spinner, a little arrow from the origin, and it points the direction. So you want to turn that pointer first, and then decide if you go forwards or backwards from the origin. So if r is greater than zero, that means it's simply positive. You're going to your point is going to be on the terminal side of your angle. Now. You know, I'm saying the terminal side of your angle because we've been talking about angles and standard position, and this is just a continuation of our trig concepts, but we're not going to be drawing angle measurements. We're drawing points. So I like to just say instead, just move forward. If you do your rotation first, just move forward if your radius is positive. If R is less than zero, then your point is on a ray opposite the terminal side. And again, you might think of terminal side as being like an initial side and a terminal side of an angle, but we are just again graphing points. So I'd like to say that if your R value is negative or less than zero, just move backwards. So we need to identify an R and a theta value. Four, and what we're going to do is find that value for the point negative three, four, which again is, an, is a rectangular coordinate or an XY coordinate. So let me get this little bit here erased. And let's see, you know, we're not going to move the point. It's still right there. All we're doing with the rectangular, uh, excuse me, the polar system is describing another way to get to that coordinate. And if you do a lot of calculations based on rotations and, like, say, navigation on the, on the globe, which is, you know, a round sphere, some of these calculations can be done easier and described easier in polar form than they can in rectangular form, which is based off of a lot of right angles, you know, an xy coordinate where you're moving horizontally and vertically from the origin. We're not going to expand on that very much, but there is a purpose of polar coordinates that you'll learn as you, you know, go through your mathematics uh, a little bit farther. So, <clears throat> I want to describe another way to get to that point in space, this flat plane, and I want to describe it with a radius, a distance from the origin, and theta. You know, this should all sound very, very familiar from what we've been doing in uh, trigonometry. So, if I put a little right triangle in here to again describe our motion as it is on the rectangular plane, we have a length of 3 and another length of 4 coming from the x-coordinate of negative 3 and the y-coordinate of 4. And if you'd like to put a negative there because it's a movement to the left, that's fine, but the length is a positive 3. Okay, so how far is that point from the origin? Well, I've drawn what we would call, or what I was calling in all my other trig videos, a reference triangle. And of course, with the little right triangle, you just do Pythagorean theorem. So the radius is going to be equal to, well, the square root of 
x squared plus y squared. And this is one of your little conversion formulas. It's almost like I'm teaching you how to convert from rectangular to polar at the same time as describing or explaining to you what a, uh, what a polar coordinate system is. And I'm doing this because I don't want you to think this is sort of just a whole other idea. We are still describing a point on a flat plane. It's just another way to describe that point. Now I want you to see the relationship between the rectangular system and the polar system. So this should look very familiar. It's just Pythagorean theorem. And it is the formula for, for calculating the radius that you would find in your pre-calc book. But we don't really need that formula. It's just Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I've just square rooted both sides to find r the radius. OK, so r is equal to the square root of the x-coordinate is negative 3 squared plus the y-coordinate of 4 squared. That comes out to, of course, 5 because we do have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now, whether you have this side labeled as positive 3 or a length of 3, which it is a length of 3, or whether you've marked this as negative 3, just have the negative to remind you that you went to the left like you would have been doing when you set up all your trig functions to make sure you don't make a sign error. At least that's how I teach it. It's not going to matter because you're still going to square that value and it's going to cancel out that negative sign. So the radius is 5 whether you put a 3 or negative 3 in. Now, how do we find rotation? We're not drawing angles. We're plotting points. But we're still going to be describing rotations based on that standard position rotation where the positive side of the x-axis is 0 and then you rotate counterclockwise and if you rotate counterclockwise that's going to be a positive rotation so from you know basically 0 degrees the positive side of the x-axis that standard position rotation that we should have been learning in trig up until now what is that amount of rotation how far from 0 degrees or 0 radians so let's put in 0 degrees in there or 0 radians to indicate that value. How much do you have to rotate to get the pointer to go, and go, you know, go towards that direction? Well, man, how long have we been finding rotation or angle measures given a point on the terminal side of a standard position angle? We've been doing that now for a couple of chapters. So you can do tangent, you can do sine, you can do cosine, you can do any trig function you like. I'm going to do tangent because that is one of the formulas that you're given in most textbooks to convert from a rectangular coordinate into an angle measure. And they like to use tangent because you're automatically given x and y. So, you know, we're going to have to find r, but so you could use any trick function you like, but textbooks generally default to tangent. So the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. We remember that. And I know we can say adjacent over hypotenuse, or adjacent over opposite, um, that would be opposite over adjacent, so gatoa, so excuse me, tangent we can think of as being opposite over adjacent, but you can tell I've been using the xy values here for quite a while from teaching trig for two chapters now, got that a little messed up. Okay, so tangent of theta is equal to the y coordinate over the x coordinate. Well, how do you get the tangent function away from uh, theta, you do with the inverse tangent. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds, and <clears throat> that's going to come out to be, right off the top of my head, negative 53.1 degrees. Or if you're working with your your uh, your, your problem is in radian mode, that would be 50, negative 53.1 degrees, or it would be negative 0.93 radians. So, hmm, trying to relate the rectangular coordinate system to the polar coordinate system, where we have r and theta, but you see where this, angle, this point is? This point is in quadrant 2. Our calculator with inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds is given us negative 53 degrees or negative 0.93 radians. Well, if I wrote, and I'm going to focus on the degrees because it's easier to do in my head. Negative 53 degrees is in quadrant 4. But my point is in quadrant 2. Now, the reason why is because, well, you know, if you remember your inverse trig functions, when you do inverse sine with your calculator, Inverse sine with your calculator, inverse sine is an inverse trig function. 
can only give you answers between negative pi over 2 or negative 90 and positive pi over 2 or positive 90. Inverse cosine as a function can only give you answers between 0 and pi. So the fact that my point is in quadrant 2, if I had used inverse cosine or set up the cosine function here instead of tangent, uh, what would that be? The cosine of theta equals x over r, so then the cosine of theta equals negative 3 over 5. And you would want that negative in there to make sure you get the angle that you want. We would be done. The answer would be correct. But using that tangent function, now inverse tangent with your calculator can only give you answers like sine of negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Now rest assured when your teacher gives you these conversion problems, they're going to give you a rectangular coordinate that is in a quadrant that's probably going to require you to think a little bit, not just take the numbers out of the calculator. So what are we supposed to do with negative 53.1 degrees? Or what are we supposed to do with that negative 0.93 radians? those angles that are in quadrant four. Well, both of these, <clears throat> and again, I'm going to do degrees when I verbally talk about this. The reference angle to negative 53.1 degrees is 53.1 degrees. And remember when we talked about unit circle, like the sine of 30 is one half, and the, excuse me, and the sine of 150 was also one half. The reason why the sine of 30 and the sine of 150 have the same ratio of one, point, uh, one half or 0.5 is because they have the same reference angle. So we're still, you know, we're still having to understand that concept. In my book, that would be chapter 4.1. For your class, I'm sure you've been hearing the words reference angle for quite a while. That's still coming into play. So hopefully you did learn it. We need an angle that's in quadrant four that has a reference angle of negative 53.1 uh, degrees or 0.93 radians. So that is going to be, and I need some room here to write, that's going to be our radius was 5, and that's going to be 180 minus 53.1 or 5 comma 126.9, I believe. Double check, 127. No, that should be 6.9. And in radians, that would be 5 and 5 times point. 9.3, which is going to be 2.21. Okay, so we have this point described in degrees, and we have this point described as radians. And you can use any, any uh, unit measure you like, whether, you know, degrees or radians, of course. Now, Here's the sticky point between rectangular coordinate system and a polar coordinate system. That is, just making sure this is right, okay. That is, when you describe a point in a rectangular coordinate system, when you say that point is negative 3, 4, that's it. That's the only way to get to that point in space from the origin. But with the polar system, 5, comma 126.9 degrees, or in other words, there's like a little arrow here that's pointing at zero, and if I take that arrow and I rotate it 126.9 degrees and then step off, I'm going to come out five units. So five comma 126.9, rotate 126.9 degrees and step out five units, that's how you get to that point. But do you remember coterminal angles from the beginning studies of trigonometry? How like the sine of 30 was one half and the sine of, oh, let's see here, 360 plus another 30, which would be 390, that the sine of 30 is one half and the sine of 390 is also one half? Those answers are the same because of the idea of a coterminal angle. Trig functions are circular functions. They repeat every certain amount of rotation. Usually it's 2 pi. Tangent and cotangent repeat every pi radians, or 180 degrees. So the 
uh, sticky thing with polar coordinates is there's more than one way to describe how to get to that point. Like, instead of just rotating 126.9 degrees, I might want to rotate a full rotation and then another 126.9. So I can take this, add 360 to it, and say, well, another name or another way of getting to this point is to go 5, and then let's see here, 486.9. Okay, well, so that's two coordinates that get to that same point in space because of that repetitive nature that trig functions have. That, and that's, you know, very closely tied to the polar coordinate system. When you're rotating around the origin, every full rotation gets you right back to where you started from. And I could add 360 again and get 5, comma, oh, let's see, 4, 7, 8, 4, 6, 846.9. And I could find, you know, if I'm in radians, of course, I'm not going to add 360 to get another full rotation or get another coterminal angle. I'm going to add 2 pi. So if I take this and I add 6.28, then another coordinate, another name for this point of negative 3, 4 is 5, comma, 8.49. Okay, so rectangular coordinate, every point has a unique coordinate to get you to that point. There's no other way to describe how to get to this yellow point other than go left 3 and up 4 when you're talking about the rectangular system. With the polar system though, 5, 126.9, 5, 486.9 degrees, 5, 846.9 degrees, all of those coordinates are going to land you on that very same point. Again, rotate 126.9 degrees and then just step out five places. You can also have a negative radius. Remember, we're going, to do, we're going to talk about that in the next couple of examples. And you can do degrees or radians. But remember, every point in a polar system basically has an infinite number of coordinates. All you have to do is just add or subtract a full rotation. So I could actually argue that Let's do it in degrees. Actually, we'll do radians as well, I guess. Why not? If I'd like to write a coordinate, and I would like to include every possible coordinate in the polar system that lands on that point, I could say, well, it's 5 plus or minus, uh, let's see here, 5 comma 126.9 plus or minus 360n where n is an integer and the 360 is the full revolution. Coterminal angles, that's where that's coming from. And then this one here would be 5 comma 221, 2.21, plus or minus 2 pi n, again, where n is an integer. Any number of full rotations, coterminal angles, that will land on this point in space. All right, got it? Let's do a couple more examples. Just graph a couple here. And then we're going to move on to conversions in the next video, going back and forth between rectangular form and polar form and vice versa. So I would like to graph 3 comma negative 30 degrees. And I would also like to graph negative 4 and 7 pi over 6. And I'm just using angles that are off the unit circle, not because we're you know, studying the unit circle necessarily or we're going to find a lot of exact value answers just so it's easier to graph. So 3, negative 30. So we're going to do the rotation first and then the radius measure. So in green here, 3, negative 30. Standard position angle or, you know, reference as far as the degrees go or radians. So we have 0 degrees. We're going to rotate negative 30 degrees and then step out three units. So rotate negative 30 degrees. That's a clockwise rotation from the positive side of the x-axis of your rectangular mode. So rotate negative 30 and step out three units. So one, two, three. Three comma negative 30. What about negative four, seven pi over six? Well, set, remember, pi over six is 30 degrees, and I want to rotate seven of those. So 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 
7 pi over 6, uh, excuse me, 6 pi over 6, and 7 pi over 6. Now my pointer is over here. I've rotated what? Basically 210 degrees. I've rotated 7 pi over 6. But now my radius is negative, negative 4. So instead of going out this direction, <clears throat> 4 units, we're going to back up. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And just for clarity, let's make that a blue dot. Now you might be going through. You know, that is at 4, 30, or 4 pi over 6. And you would be absolutely correct. If I take this and I subtract pi radians and say I only want to rotate, you know, not 7 pi over 6, but pi over 6, instead of rotating all the way around and pointing back over down into quadrant 3, I just want to rotate a little bit and rotate or point into quadrant 1. Well, that addition or subtraction of a half rotation or that addition or subtraction of pi radians, or if we are in degrees, 180 degrees. You know, that's the other side of the circle. It said, well, my note said if r was less than 0 or negative, it's on the opposite ray. Well, that's just the other side of the circle, which is separated by 180 degrees or pi. So if I want to take this angle measure, subtract pi, or if you're in degrees, subtract 180, then that would make the radius positive. So there's two coordinates that land on that blue dot. Okay? If you add or subtract 180 degrees, or if you add or subtract pi radians, that points you in the opposite direction. That will allow you to change the sign of your radius. I'm Mr. True. That's your introduction to the polar coordinate system. Bam! Go do your homework.